Hello folks, Vinci Shooter here. First of all, I'm just making this video because A, I'm bored and I've got nothing else better to do. And <laughs> B, um, I get asked quite often about the different belts that I use, the different platforms that I have, um, and really the evolution of why I've come to decide to use these belts in their different connotations because I got fed up, the mainstay is I got fed up having lots of different belts. Sadly, I still do have quite a few, but they're a little bit more purified and specific for the requirement that I need. So um, I wanted to share with you my first belt. Um, this is my original two-part belt. I've had this for many years, um, originally sourced from AW Armory. And again, it's, it's been used in different connotations, different uh, ways. It's a two-part belt, it's the outer part. It was one of the original ones, that, as far as I know, to come into the UK. You use it with, obviously, a softer inner part that goes through your belt loops. They hold your trousers up, and obviously you apply this over the top. Now, what I've done here is, um, over the years, the ghost belts, sadly, do sag. The more weight you put on them, the more they fall. So uh, this one has been, obviously, made redundant, and now I have rehashed this for my Action Air belt, or my IPSC s off pistol belt so what i've got on here is a four anodized unbranded double stack magazine holders so the only thing that you'll notice that's missing off here is a holster so this little bad boy is a double alpha quick clamp for a holster what i've got here is my airsoft holster uh, i think this is a double dragon or some dragon and what this does is it has a little keyway on it a little black piece there if you can see it and it obviously makes up into the female socket. As you put it in, you then start doing the nut up. And then there you go. You now have a holster ready to rock and roll and set up for, um, I believe this one is an STI SV block inside it that can easily be whipped out so I can use it for a Glock. Uh, I've got two airsoft Glocks. I've got the high capper. Um, and obviously it is quick release and it, it just means that you can use it as an IPSC belt. It's within regulations and obviously it can come undone for storage. Now, the only thing I found was I get found, I got fed up with two part belts where you had to overlap it and you had to um, have a piece, uh, I think it's called belt keeper. It goes around the top here. So what I've done here is I've rehashed mine with a, uh, this is a Weber tactical uh, quick release clamp. Now, originally they were made by Carbon Arms and I've got the spare through Weber Tactical. Cheers, guys. Um, what you've got here is, it's a bit like a snowball binding clip, but it's the proper one. You can put it round. You get, obviously, your holster and your mag pouches into the right position. You pass it through, get to where you want it, ish, and then you can tighten it up. Again, it's quick release, comes undone. There's no extra Velcro. There's no extra bits to get snagged on. Because um, as two-part belts get older, the Velcro does get weaker. And uh, there are a few videos floating around of other competitors that I shoot with that as they've been tearing up the range, you know, their whole belt has fallen off. With this mechanism, that thing is not coming off. Worst case, you just do it right up. And obviously it becomes very, very uncomfortable, a bit tight, but you use it take it off at the end of the stage. In here is my Airwind Innovations belt. The basic platform for this is an ease load belt. I've had this the longest. This is the well, it's the most padded. It's adjustable with a Velcro strap and it works well. On the front there, I have two Airwind plates, one of which is a 28 plate holder for left hand or weak hand loading with a tube fed shotgun. Uh, the right hand side is the right hand over strong hand shoulder, which is something I'm learning for this year because um, I've recently just bought a new shotgun. Um, so I don't feel too confident with it, but I can reliably get four in, but I can't get four in at speed. I've just basically gone over to the air wind because I've had, originally I started out with the Tacoms. Again, great. I've had Chameleon Fabrics. Now, I used to own a Chameleon Fabrics. If you, if you have one, don't ever sell it, they're the most reliable. Again, the downside of any of the Comedian Fabrics or any of the Tacoms is that they were set centers for holding two shells. It was 70 mil shells or nothing else. At least with the Airwinds, um, 
and other competitors, you do have a certain amount of adjustment between them. Personally, I use the Airwind. I find that the curvature of it fits better with my old belly. And for the shells that I use, which are the Hull Superfast, the most reliable, and they're the cleanest, the definitely the least smokiest. That'll put the cat amongst the pigeons. Um, but I've just found them the most reliable for going across all of my platforms. So this is a dedicated Action Air IPSC belt for pistol only. Now, I got fed up of having four or five different belts with different mechanisms. So I've got the, the uh, ones I previously explained about, the Airwind Innovation slash gun parts, uh, tube fed belt. Then I had another one for a pistol. Then I had another one for uh, rifle. So I thought this would give way to an evolution of using one belt for many different platforms. So uh, I wanted to introduce you to the main belt that you will see me using uh, a lot of competitions within the UK and abroad. Now this little bad boy is a proper, genuine Weber tactical uh, slash carbon arms uh, belt. Uh, it was brought out because a lot of the three gunners in America were finding that they couldn't uh, mix their platforms around between rifle, pistol and shotgun. Uh, as per obviously the range demands, if you suddenly then went to an all pistol stage or an all shotgun stage or an all rifle stage, well then you, you're a bit scuppered if you've got a holster in the way. So this was the primary platform that I went for. This is again, it's a Weber tactical uh, belt with a ratchet on the back. Now the little sockets that you see on the front here are Safari Land ELS. Now, again, I thought, well, sod it, I'm gonna do everything genuine, everything proper. You can build one of these on a cheaper budget from a company that makes airsoft versions of these belts. Now that would be a copy of a proper Safari Land ELS belt. Now basically, again, it's just a, a leather belt with Velcro on the inside, still two part. Two part is the main uh, part of obviously any kind of uh, dynamic shooting. And that has two eyelets then pop into the female eyelets on the belt wrapping it round. Again, it was great. I did buy one. I bought one in Utah about four years ago, but I just got tired of it. And this mechanism has just improved things. Okay, so, so there we go. That is the first one I wanted to show you. There is my Airwin Innovations shotgun belt. Um, All I had to do here, uh, I've got three weak hand 12s. I've obviously counted this one at a slight angle because sometimes it is pushed further around your left hip. All I had to do was pass through some M3 bolts. I then managed to apply it to the male side of the ELS plate. Okay, so same belt, same clips, looking very familiar now, getting a bit boring. But what I've done here is I've managed to now utilize it all for AR-15, 22 rimfire uh, mini rifle competitions for 223, um, just whatever you want to use it for. Uh, this is a Blade Tech double stack. Uh, a lot of people do complain about these, obviously it gets a bit heavy and obviously canters out. Good thing about these is they are made to go straight onto the male ELS. No mucking around, no drilling holes, no fanning with uh, bolts or anything like that. Just literally straight on and then clicks on the belt. This doesn't look pretty, but it works. I've got an M4 domed Allen key head holding obviously the male clamp onto the back plate through the AR uh, holder. Everything's flat. There's no intrusion into the actual assembly. So obviously it doesn't cause any problems with the retention of the AR mag. But what I did was I machined in three, inside this back plate, I machined in three M4 helicoil threads so that I can actually undo this screw and this will actually canter directly straight up, straight to the left and straight to the right. Again, I've had to muck around with this to make it fit, but you know, I've now got a reliable platform that can hold four AR magazines. So, as you may have quite figured out by now, uh, things are starting to look very, very similar. This is my LBP belt, or my uh, practical pistol belt for the UK. So what I've set up with this belt is a double alpha um, race master holster. So what I've done with this holster is I've passed two 
M3 screws through just to level it off with some washers. And I've put the M4 bolt all the way through, helicoiled, so that I can obviously retain this in the correct place. The, as you'll notice, I didn't have to drill any holes, didn't have to make any bastard joints. This was just a case of passing the bolt through, putting a flat nut in, filing it off, and ta-da, you now have a fully functional holster. Now the remainder on this belt for this particular type of uh, discipline is all double alpha dedicated single stack holders. Uh, again, all cantered to the correct positions where I find it helpful. Uh, I find it easier to load. And on the back here, I have the one of my very first ever single stack. This is an M2010 Israeli Tactical or Zahao Tactical uh, double magazine holder. So what you have here is an end result of a reliable long barrel firearm IPSC belt. You've got everything you need to speedily load and obviously take it on and off. What I have here is my setup for real handgun shooting or for three gun or IPSC handgun, should I go to Northern Ireland or wherever. Um, I have the Zahao uh, first generation and second generation adjustable magazines. These are universal double stack nine mil uh, mag holders, but they are primarily aimed really towards Glock. Uh, same with the holster. This is an all powers tactical uh, and a really lovely Israeli company that I found um, a couple of years ago and I've used. So it has a retainer inside it, a bit like these holsters, but it automatically clicks into the trigger guard of the handgun. And to release it, you have to push down. It will. You can't just pull straight out of the holster. You must push down with your thumb to release the handgun from the holster. That's the one that I found the most reliable. Um, I can also use this in, because obviously over the years I've actually had a go at the old Action Air uh, 3 gun over here, which was a great laugh run by a great group of lads. Sadly, it, it failed because of the airsoft shotguns, um, but this is the most reliable, and if I can train with that, I can train it for the States. But if I were to travel to Northern Ireland, all I need to do is I could use that if I was shooting a block, or if I wanted to get game here, change the block on here, slide this in, and now I have a partial setup holding four magazines, and I can change the block in the middle here for a Glock or whatever handgun I see fit, change the two bolts, boop, and there you go. I've now got a full bore handgun set up. So yeah, but so when I first started shooting and getting into multi-gun and obviously looking at multi-different, multi-disciplines, um, we were using Blade Tech clips. Now they were great, but they started to twist and they talk, they were talked and they were, you, you'd bite them back down again, they'd snap, then you'd so here you go folks, this is the last piece of the puzzle. Um, as you can see, I can mount many different styles of disciplines and different uh, equipment to the one belt. This is ordinarily what I would be using in the States. Um, set up with the all pass tactical as I've already shown you, level three. I've got my two very, very adjustable and very amicably placed uh, nine mil double stack universal pouches. They're not the quickest. They're not like the angled double alpha ones, but for three gun, it's all about retention. It's about keeping them in there. But at the same time, still being able to obviously reliably pull them out and get them into the firearm. Uh, then obviously I have the Airwin Innovation slash gun parts uh, adjustable magnetic quad loader, left hand. And around the, around the back here, I've got my Bladetech uh, double AR holster. This so, is my last belt. This is my Typhoon F12 open class IPSC shotgun uh, belt. I've got uh, three different manufacturers on here. Um, <coughs> the belt itself is if you were to buy a two part belt, double alpha, I think this is the premium belt. When you hold it out, one hand, boom, nothing moves. And even if I loaded it up with five magazines holding about 50 rounds of shotgun shells, it won't move. These are very, 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 very well made, but they're also very uncomfortable. And this is obviously the part that I was telling you about. This is the overlay, there's your belt keeper. I do mine up with the right hand and obviously load around with the left. That offers up just into the right position to give me the retention to stop the magazines from falling off. Now, sometimes I do actually use two belt keepers because five, five shotgun magazines do get a bit heavy after a while. Um, that's the belt itself. 
The other part I've got is something I've had for quite a few years. This is a Safari Land clip-on tactical loader. It does move around a bit on the belt, but with some Velcro, again, I've, I've had to bodge it almost by using some 3M uh, Velcro. The, down, the biggest downside of two-part belts is that when you clamp an appliance to the belt, you lose that piece of Velcro. You lose the ability of retaining that part, which is where the weight is on your actual hip. So what I did was I put, I actually took some 3M Velcro. Um, I've, I chemically washed it on the back to get rid of the adhesive. And I've actually aerodited these pieces of Velcro to the back of this metal plate. So when I put it on, I'm not just having the retention of the Velcro inside the belt, I'm actually having the retention from the Velcro patches on the appliances as well, on the caddies. Last thing I've got on here is all made by Dorset, Dorset Woodland Blades. Um, very, very well made. Uh, the guy, look him up, amazing knife maker. Some of his Damascus blades are something else. But he also plays around the Kydex. Now Kydex itself is moldable plastic. Um, again, it holds great retention, really well made um, F12 magazine holders. Now obviously I've got these in orange because my gun is orange. Um, he's done these other little accessories. This is a safety flag holder, an extra round, so you can put a no, if you ever have, if you ever run out of ammo, it's always nice to have that extra sort of oh shit round. If not, it's nice to have a little piece to obviously load into the gun, first of all. Um, <coughs> obviously, Dorset Woodland Blades are very well made in the fact that everything is designed and made in-house. He can make magazine holders and pouches for different platforms, um, but everything comes back to the way he makes these plates. This is stainless steel. These, are, these aren't these are aluminium. These are proper, well-made stainless steel Allen key bolts, M3, I think they are. And he makes these plates himself. He makes all the sockets. Um, so you've basically got a, a belt that sadly is another belt I have to own, but it is for the shotgun. It doesn't sag, it doesn't move, it holds a lot of weight. So that is, again, is worth the investment. Guys, take it easy and I'll see you around.